China's own financial engagement in Belt and Road Initiative comprises an investment volume of roughly 1000 billion US dollars, seven times what the US spent under the Marshall Plan 70 years ago. The initiative includes more than 1000 individual projects across about 80 participating states, representing around two thirds of the world's population. The combined GDP of all countries involved is approximately 23 trillion US dollars. It is at present assessed that China's own monetary commitment in Belt and Road Initiative involves an speculation volume of about 1000 billion US dollars, multiple times what the US spent under the Marshall Plan. The activity incorporates in excess of 1000 individual tasks across around 80 partaking states, addressing around 66% of the total population. The joint GDP of all nations included is around 23 trillion US dollars. Statistical background of Belt and Road Initiative The Belt and Road Initiative thus refers to two large-scale development proposals, the land-based Silk Road Economic Belt and the sea-based 21st Century Maritime Silk Road Economic Belt. In order to implement this goal, the SREB consists of several separate economic corridors. Firstly, the Northern Corridor connects China with Europe by land via Russia. Secondly, the Central Corridor focuses on infrastructure built up between China and Europe via Iran and Turkey by both land and sea. Thirdly, the Southern Corridor, which is actually the CPEC, aims to connect Kashgar in China's Xinjiang province with Pakistan's seaports in the south. Being located at the intersection between Central, South and East Asia, Xinjiang turns into a geographic linchpin for the Belt and Road Initiative's connectivity, not only as concerns the Eurasian landmass but also the Belt and Road Initiative's maritime linkages. Besides these three major corridor initiatives, the implementation of three other corridors is currently handled by Beijing. The China-Mongolia-Russia corridor, the China-Myanmar-Bangladesh-India corridor and the China-Southeast Asia mainland corridor. The Belt and Road Initiative known in Chinese and in, formally in English as One Belt, One Road is a global infrastructure development strategy adopted by the Chinese government in 2013 to invest in nearly 70 countries and international organizations. It is considered a counterpiece of the Communist Party of China General Secretary and President Xi Jinping foreign policy who originally announced the strategy as the Silk Road Economic Belt. During an official visit to Kazakhstan in September 2013, the initiative was incorporated into the constitution of the People's Republic of China in 2017. The Chinese government calls the initiative a bit to enhance the regional connectivity and embrace a brighter future. The project has a target completion or date of 2049, which will coincide with the centennial anniversary of People's Republic of China's founding. BRI or Chinese economic diplomacy will change the regional politics and China will emerge as a global economic power on the global political map of the world. Background CPAC's vision was firstly introduced during late Zulfikar Ali Bhutto's era. Modern form of CPAC was introduced during Musharraf's tenure. Plans for a corridor extending from Chinese boundary to Pakistan's deep water ports on the Arabian Sea go back to the 1950s. Chinese interest in Pakistan's profound water harbor at Gawadar had been revived by in 2002. China started development at Gawadar port which was finished in 2006. In 2013, then the Pakistani Prime Minister Asif Ali Zardari and Chinese Premier choose to additional improve common availability. In February 2014, 
Pakistani President Mamnoon Hussain visited China to examine the plans for an economic corridor in Pakistan. After two months, Pakistan Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif met with Chinese premiers to talk about additional plans, bringing about the full extent of the undertaking to be conceived under Nawaz Sharif's residency. The strategic importance of uh, launching this project, CPAC, with the help of uh, Pakistan is not only a game changer, a uh, new strategic uh, dimension internationally. It is going to change. The world used to do the business because the known history of the business development at links to the uh, European style of uh, doing the business or we say it the Western style of the business. This is the Eastern style. The China who ruled the world by the uh, its uh, population, now it is going to rule the world with its business approach. Economical importance of CPEC. The main aim of CPEC is to improve the lives of people of Pakistan and China by building an economic corridor promoting bilateral connectivity, construction, explore potential bilateral investment, economic and trade, logistics and people-to-people -people contact for regional connectivity. It includes number 1. Integrated transport and IT systems including road, rail, port, air and data communication channels. Number 2 energy corporation number three spatial layout functional zones industries and industrial parks number four agricultural development number five socio economic development number six tourism corporation and people to people communication number seven cooperation in livelihood areas number eight financial corporation and number nine human resource development Critics of CPAC CPAC may lead Pakistan to Chinese colonies and many people think CPAC is a death trap project for Pakistan. Dream of CPAC, if it really comes true, is a new dimension. It's a new world order. It's going to open the new doors. It's going to open the new venues not only for China and Pakistan, but changing the entire business approach of the world. Conclusion The facts presented in this documentary suggest that the main objectives of CPAC under Built and Road Initiative is purely economical development and politics. It is not a debt trap plan and nor colonial model. Pakistan has financial potential to repay loans on time. The CPAC related loan is less than 10% of the country total loan. CPAC will be a game changer for Pakistan economically and regionally.